The subject of this video is my number one analytics superpower. If you are a professional interested in having more impact at work using data, you want to apply business analytics to achieve better outcomes in your job, this is the technique that you should learn first. Ready for it? KPI analysis. Analyzing key performance indicators. Yeah, I pause there for a second to let that sink in. Not machine learning, not AI, not statistics, not this, that, or the other thing. Analyzing KPIs. And you might be a bit surprised by that, but let me explain why I have found this to be the single most powerful technique for affecting change within an organization, within a business. One, if you do it right, you're following a standardized methodology, a standardized process. So no one can argue with the insights that you arrive at because you're using a formalized technique. So that's one, right? Your insights are legit. Two, and this one is far more important, if your organization, if your team, if your company has gone through the trouble of crafting key performance indicators, KPIs, then it's a safe bet that one or more managers within that organization, that company, that team, their compensation, their ability to get promoted is contingent on them moving the needle for that KPI. Maybe it's to move it up in the case of sales, and maybe it's to move it down in the case of something like credit card chargebacks. Regardless, KPIs are typically the language of the business, if for no other reason, because managers, um, they pay attention to them because it's how they get, it's how they get paid. So KPI analysis is super powerful. Now, just to be clear, and we're going we're gonna to cement this. I'm going to cement this with an example, by the way, in this video. It doesn't have to be a formal KPI that I'm talking about here. It can be any business measurement over time. That's basically what I'm talking about here. How can you analyze a metric that summarizes business performance over time and do it in such a way that you can get legit insights? So let's go ahead and flip over to a hypothetical example to really cement these ideas. So let's say... Um, we're gonna take a hypothetical example of a director of customer service at a company called Widget Co. And her name's Carissa, let's say, and I'm just pulling this stuff out of the air. So Carissa is the director of Widget Co's customer service department. She's in charge of essentially a very large call center, let's say. So let's flip over to PowerPoint and take a look at a hypothetical example of how KPI analysis would help Carissa to be more effective running Widgetco's customer service call center. Okay, so here we are. And you can see here, this is a prototype dashboard that I just threw together in Excel. But based on my experience, this is extremely common. I've seen dashboards that look similar to this implemented in Excel, Tableau, Power BI, uh, a technology called Clipfolio, you name it. There's a whole bunch of different types of technologies. That's not important. What's really important is this idea of, hey, do your dashboards, do your business intelligence dashboards look like this? And let's say, for example, that Carissa decided that she wanted to become more data-driven in the customer service department, and she worked with her business intelligence team to create this BI dashboard. And this is pretty typical, right? She's got some pie charts, and she's got some bar charts, and everything's awesome, okay? So imagine, if you will, this hypothetical scenario. Chris has got this BI dashboard built and she's really interested in using data analytics to achieve true data-driven decision-making within her department, the customer service department. So she's got this dashboard that was built for her. And one morning she comes into the office and she drops her stuff off in her office. And then she goes down to the kitchen and she grabs a cup of coffee and she says hi to Bob and Sally and all that kind of stuff. And then she gets back to her desk and she fires up the dashboard and she sees this. Whoa, wait a second, whoa. And let's assume for the sake of argument this was yesterday's data. And she's like, whoa, why are there so many operators? And the reason why she might be alarmed by this is because Carissa is likely incented or responsible for a couple of things. One is the overall quality of customer service rendered to Widgetco's customers, of course. And two, cost. She needs to do that in a cost-effective manner because she's probably looked at as a cost center. So this is the kind of thing that's going to get her really freaked out potentially. And she's going to send out a high importance email to all of her 
Floor manager saying, we need to get together stat. We need to figure out what's going on here. Why are we spending so much money on operators on the floor? So this is not... Um, <laughs> um, this is maybe not such a hypothetical example based on my experience. There are, um, I could tell you stories where something very similar happened in the real world. Um, for example, at a very large software company based in the Seattle area, but we won't name that company. Anyway, this is a legit example. Okay, it's very, very legit. So this is problematic, right? So many dashboards look like this, but they forget one fundamental fact. And I'm going to tell you what that is right now. Okay, this fundamental fact is that the only way to truly understand what's going on in the business is to look at it over time. Because here's the thing, businesses fluctuate, right? It's just a natural course of events. No business process within any company is executed flawlessly every single day, day after day, year after year. It doesn't happen. So inevitably, things move around. That's just, that's just the way it is. So the previous visualizations that we saw on that BI dashboard aren't very good from a business analytics perspective. It's hard to get to data-driven decision-making using visualizations like that. What you really need is something like what you see here. So this is known as a line chart or a running record. And basically what it does is it has time along the x-axis. And then what it does is it shows you some sort of KPI, some sort of business measurement over time. And in this case, it's call center operators. And what you can see here is this line is level one operators, and this line is level two operators, and this line is the total number of operators. And notice how much more information, notice how much more insight can be provided using this visualization over just a pie chart or a bar chart or a donut chart or any of those types of visualizations. Not that there's anything wrong with those visualizations. However, in my experience, if you're interested in using data analytics to achieve truly data-driven business decisions, you need visualizations like this because you have to understand what's going on in the business over time. So what you can see here is that, you know, if we just look at this orange line, which is the total number of operators by day, you can see that it moves up and down. And that's not, that's not necessarily shocking. Early on in my life, not long after I graduated from university with my bachelor's degree, I worked in a customer service call center. And if the call volumes were actually lower than expected, based on whatever forecasting me method they used, the floor managers would go around, the supervisors would go around and say, hey, um, we're not experiencing high call volume. Are you, did you want to go home early today? And that was a way for them to save money because most of the call reps were hourly. So if they got some folks to go volunteer to go home, they could lower cost and it would make sense. And you would see that kind of scenario exhibited like this. That's one way of knowing why it fluctuates day, you know, day in and day out. But notice this. Notice that even though we got some peaks and valleys here, this one right here, boom, this one right here, boom, is worthy of interest. And let's say that it's that previous scenario, right, where we were talking about. Carissa comes in, she grabs a cup of coffee, she says, says hi to Bob and Sally and all the other people, and she gets to our office, she fires up her BI dashboard, and she says, whoa, hey, wait, 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 no. This is interesting, mm, quite scary because for some reason this peak is way higher than everything else. And just eyeballing it, we could see that, wow, that's probably worthy of interest. And of course, Carissa would be probably justified in calling together her floor managers quickly to find out what's going on here because they're seeing a big increase in their costs because of this. But notice this. Notice that is much, much more, notice how much more powerful this, this visualization is for understanding what's going on in the business. But notice that it's still relatively arbitrary. I gotta eyeball it and say, mm, yeah, this one looks like it's pretty interesting. It looks like it's out of character for the business based on historical data. So what we would like is this ability to get these kinds of insights, but to standardize when we actually go into action mode. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, notice that I've got a new visualization here, but it's quite similar to the one we just saw. It is a running record, it is a line chart, and right here where you're looking at one piece of information, one measurement, one KPI, total number of operators, and it's by day. And we just plot it out and we draw a line here, and then boom, 
You can see this one right here, right? This corresponds to that spike that we saw on the previous slide. But notice this. Notice the difference between that previous chart that we just saw on the last slide and this one. Not only we only have like one line on it, that's one difference, but the other difference that's probably piquing your interest is these dashed lines here. Now, these dashed lines can be thought of as data analytics guardrails, right? These, are, these data analytics guardrails are the secret sauce of using this technique for arriving at truly data-driven decision-making, okay? So we've got our process going here graphically, right? You know, the total number of operators every day. And Carissa comes in and let's say she sees this and she goes, whoa, wow, that's really, really high. But notice this, notice that the dot, right, that represents the total number of operators is below this upper dotted line. This guardrail essentially tells you this, anything above this is in the danger zone. Right? And if right now, if you're thinking Tom Cruise, Top Gun, Highway to the Danger Zone, that's exactly what I want to have in your head right now. Highway to the Danger Zone, baby. If you've got values up here, that's what this dotted line, this, what this guardrail tells you. you. You should pay attention to what's going on. Something has substantively changed in the business and it's worthy of your attention. So notice that we get all the benefits of the previous visualization, but we now get a standardized process for understanding what's going on. Now, a reasonable, um, a reasonable response from Carissa in this case is to take a look at this data and says, wow, yeah, that's pretty high. It's real close to this upper limit here, this data analytics guardrail here, but it didn't cross it. So I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I'm not gonna call a meeting, I'm not gonna panic because it hasn't crossed that threshold yet. That's what I'm talking about when I mean a standardized methodology for insights. And there are other types of insights that you can garner from this data visualization. This is just one, and I'm just emphasizing this one because it's quite simple to understand. This visualization is what's known as a process behavior chart, and it is the most awesome, useful, single technique that I found in my analytics career, in doing hands-on analytics. It's more useful than market basket analysis. It's more useful than linear regression. It's more useful than the Mighty Random Forest. And if you follow my content, you know how much I love the Mighty Random Forest. All that to say, this chart is awesomeness. And let me show you why. Let me show you why it's awesomeness. If you incorporate these process behavior charts onto your dashboards, you get scenarios like this. Now notice here, I've switched, I've switched metrics. I've switched KPIs. And that's important, right? Because you can put anything on a process behavior chart. Your number of credit card chargebacks, your daily call volume in a call center, your daily or weekly or monthly conversion rate on your website, your sales, who knows, anything, right? Any number, any metric that measures the business, the operations of the business effectively over time can be used on these charts. So it doesn't have to be an official KPI. It just has to be some sort of measurement over time. So here we're using daily call volume instead. And notice this, right? Carissa comes into the office. She drops her bag off. She goes get coffee. She says hi to mom. She says hi to Sally. And she fires up her BI dashboard and boom. Unequivocally, in a standardized way, she can say it's time for a staff meeting. Our call volume spiked yesterday, let's say, by a huge amount. It's way above the guardrail. We're way up in the danger zone here. And maybe there was a product release or maybe there was a site outage. Who knows, right? But there was probably something that went on in the business to cause this spike. And she doesn't even need to know what happened. This chart tells her everything that she needs to know in a standardized way. And she says, look, it's time to call the floor managers together and figure out what's going on. Now, not surprisingly, in my own work, the dashboards that I have created, and I've created many for executives to use, for um, managers to use, they are heavily, heavily focused on process behavior charts. There's, a, there's this idea that says, look, you should be able to run your business bet with between three and five KPIs. And I would say that's awesome advice. I 100% agree with it. And typically what I do is I would have three to five process behavior charts for each one of those KPIs. And that would be the primary dashboard because it tells you so much. 
it tells you truly whether you're trending up, whether you're trending down, whether you're just kind of like maintaining the status quo. It'll tell you if there's any bumps in the road, and it all does this in a standardized way. Now, here's the kicker. This is wildly easy to do. You need no fancy math. You need no fancy Excel skills to do this. You can learn it all, whether you have a background in math or not, whether you have a background in coding or not, and whether or not you're an Excel wizard. It doesn't matter. Anybody can do this. Any professional can do this, and it's wildly, wildly powerful stuff. Okay, there you have it. KPI analysis in a nutshell. It is the single most effective business analytics technique that I have found to allow, to get folks to get to truly data-driven decision-making. So if you're interested in learning more, go ahead and look below the video here in the description, and there'll be some links. I teach some courses on this, and as I said, it's a, anybody can do this, any professional. If you've got basic Excel skills, and if you can use an Excel function like average, you're good to go. You can learn how to apply this technique and analyze KPIs and do all the kinds of things that I talked about in this video. Okay, so if you like this video, if you enjoyed the content, if you wouldn't mind, please help me out, okay? And just smash that like button, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. KPI analysis, the very first analytic superpower that you should develop if you wanna become awesome in data analytics. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.